welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, I'm doing a 64 player single elimination cube draft challenge to try to get to the live cube draft in Vegas. Everybody in this event won a qualifier. They went 4 0 with a cube draft last week. That means everyone here knows how to cube. There's, there's no dopes left. Got some big names here. We got Mental Misstep. We got Aspiring Spike. We got jpa's in here somewhere lsv was enrolled in this event but he's not anymore i wonder if he won one yesterday and the prizes for this event literally first place gets to play on saturday there are we're not playing for anything there's no prizes for 5-0 no prizes for 3-0 this is an extremely competitive cube environment i'm going to be recording my draft live and then i'm going to play my matches not live and if I end up having enough to make a video out of, I'll go back over the replays. Playing live is just like some percent of my brain has to be focused on things other than playing the game. And in a spot like this, I'm not willing to take that risk. So if you're watching this, it means that the gameplay videos will be off of replays and I must have won enough to make a league. Let's get into this draft. Off we go. This opening pack, we don't have any insane, you know, time walk solving kind of stuff. Fetch lands, fixing, are strong, shallow grave, kind of the worst of three animators. Mox Diamond is such. I see good players play this card all the time, and every time I play against it, I lose to it. But every time I play it in this high power, low curve format, I want to be playing like. 15 or 16 lands, and then I end up just mulliganing hands that have Mox Diamond or drawing Mox Diamond in the mid game. I could just stake a claim on White Aggro because Luminarch Aspirin is actually really good in that. I'm going to take Mox Diamond, though. It makes me a little nervous because I personally have not had success with the card, even though it's obviously powerful. Atraxa, there's a lot to make happen with an Atraxa. Inti and Adeline are both in this pack. If I had taken that. Luminarch Aspirin, this would have probably been my, my Huckleberry. Atraxa works with Natural Order, with Flash, with Reanimate. Seven mana is castable if you're in a, a grindy deck. Animate Dead's in the pack with it, though. Shit. The thing about Atraxa is you need to draft cards to set it up. And the thing about Animate Dead is if you're... If creatures just die or get discarded or countered over the nor normal course of a game... Animate Dead is on. I don't expect to wheel a track, so she's too good. But I do think Animate Dead is the best card in this pack by a lot. All right. Kaito is a reasonable tempo and control card that also happens to enable Reanimator. Parallax Wave, another really strong white card. I'm not going to do the thing throughout the draft where I'm like, oh, if I had taken the white deck, because that just doesn't matter at some point. I'm not impressed with this pack. Rexane Revoker usually finds a target and it goes in any deck. I'm not going to stake a claim on Dark Depths, but Depths, Map, and Shifting Woodland are all in this pack. Like, if somebody, if an enterprising gamer wanted to take the Woodland and wield the Depths, they're probably pretty likely to do that. I don't think that's me, though. For me, it's Kaito or Revoker. I am going to take the Revoker here. Okay, Snapcaster Mage, a powerful card. Death Raider Champion is a unit. This thing applies damage like crazy. Baleful Strix is just always a solid card. And Rakdos is a supported reanimator archetype, a reanimator color pair. I have the enemy dead. Red has a bunch of looting in it. I've only really passed Inti in terms of powerful red cards. I think white is going to dry up. Anyone downstream who took that Aspirin took that out of Lin. I'm not going to get a white card. Detective's Phoenix is also a card that functions from the graveyard. I think I'm going to take Champion. Start to move into red uh, immediately. Rewarded for that, a pick five Chandra. 
We've got another fetch land and shock land in the pack for fixing. Taiga as well. Lots of good mana kicking around, but Chandra is kind of the quintessential red mid-range big Chungus. And getting Death Greeter Champion into Chandra back to back in the middle of the pack, I'm going to at least acknowledge as a signal. There is almost nothing for me here. Oh, Blood Tithe Harvester. This does a lot. It is just insane on stats if you could cast it on turn two, which you need to be solid Rakdos to do. The Blood Token enables Reanimator. Blood Token also gives you material for things like Broadside Bombardier or Gut. I don't think any of these other cards are for me, and it's not even really close. Arena of Glory, banger. Anger is not a card that I would play. Mistress Bobble gives you that air quotes 39 card deck. None of these other cards are even remotely for the spot I'm in. Yeah, it's Arena of Glory. So I haven't really seen a black card since I took this Animate Dead pack two, or pick two. It's a very late sneak attack. Which, if nobody has the sneak attack, and I really don't think I'm wheeling that Atraxa, but nobody took this is a good sign. Do I want my red deck to have this gear on it? The alternative is Lumberjack, but that's only really good in Gruel, because you need a critical density of forests. I'm not playing Angie's Ravager, if I can avoid it. I'd all spec on sneak attack. Put it over in the, the maybe zone. DBF. Imperial Seal, I don't think... I mean, Imperial Seal is good with Sneak Attack if I actually am trying to assemble a combo here. But Verdant Catacombs is a black fetch land in my deck that is currently asking me a lot more red than it is asking black, but I do have one and a half good black cards. I'm going to take the Catacombs. The tracks that did not come back to the surprise of no one. Restless Fence, On Color Duel, and a Creature Land. Karn... I have a couple artifacts. Like, you don't really want to spend four mana on car to make a 1-1. One, one. You want to make, like, a 4-4. Four, four. I'll take the fence. Shifting Woodland and Dark Depths on the wheel. That read was correct. Not that I could do anything about it. Uh, there was a Doomsday going around. I'm just thinking about what I want to take from other people at this point. Yeah, I'll put Jace in my sideboard. Make sure nobody can have Doomsday. You do play in pod here. Oh, hell yeah. Fetchable on color Surveil Duel. Let's get it. All right, it looks like Rakdos, or at least Red, is not particularly contested right now. The Atrax is gone. Taiga. I can fetch that. Green Splash just became an option. I think I'd rather have Haywire Might. Just put it in my sideboard. Risen Reef, also not going to be played. Min Skinbu and Orcish Bowmaster. Oh, no. Well, this is actually... These are both cards that I would put directly under Power 9 in terms of how good they are. I think in this deck, though, I have Mox Diamond, and I did just pick up that value Taiga that I can fetch. I think Minsk and Boo is better than Orcish Bowmasters, but somebody's going to be really happy to pick that up. Also, like I said, uh, I'm barely touching Black, and Vernon Catacombs can access Black, just get Basic Swamp or Restless Vents. Maybe I end up splashing anime dead and I'm gruel. I think I like Minskid Boo better than Orcish Bowmaster. The Wheel of Fortune was in pack one. Somebody's got it. Mana Vault's here too. I'm not taking Mana Vault over Minskid Boo or Bowmaster. Yikes. I'm going to take Minskid Boo. That's really close though. Right, we've got Territorial Kavu, Fatal Push, Bristly Bill. Bristly Bill's really good. And if I am skewing Gruel, Blue to Delta gets Raucous Theater. I don't need access to Blue, though. Battle Ball is a reasonable thing to sneak, but I'm not really into sneak attack at this moment. Fatal Push, just efficient removal, though. And Green is more open than Black at this table. I would love to get this Bristly Bill back. Faithless Looting, my reanimator thing hasn't really come together here. I'm going to take the efficient removal. Mind Twist, Soren. Do I have to do gain three life? I don't think my deck does that. All right. Not really considering Soren. I guess it's just Mind Twist. This is all three of the colors that I can get offered in Catacombs, but I think Proving Ground is more likely to wheel than Mind Twist is. And Essica's Chariot, I'm happy with. Or Palantir's not going to come back. 
I might get Chariot back. I'm taking the twist. We're John Ding, folks. Well, Archon of Cruelty is really good with Sneak Attack and with Animate Dead. I feel like I'm likely to wield this Augur or Season Pyromancer, either of which I'd be happy with. Yeah, I'm taking Archon. Vaultborn Tyrant. Another dope thing to sneak. On color fetch land that Ferdin or on color duel that fetch land gets. Yeah, we're we're at a crux in the draft right now, which is, do I want to chase this, or do I want to make sure this works? I think I want to make sure this works. Now I kind of wish I had the Imperial Seal because I do have this stuff. Right, mana has been taken. There's a Bayou and an Inquisition. Those are my serious considerations for this pack. I think my mana is actually getting pretty good. I'm going to take Inquisition of Kozilek. Leovold, Corpse Dance, Umazawa's Jote, Bitter Reunion. Bitter Reunion is actually solid here. Gate Command is good too. A yeah, Reunion is just passive smoothing that also can set up Reanimator. Spending two mana to do that instead of adding to the board can be an issue. Like you could just get run over. I think it is Bitter Reunion though. I can already hear the comments telling me how good Umazawa's Jute is. Yeah, I know. Sometimes. Evolve Sleeper is filler. Dam is a filler level removal spell. Grave Titan does bridge the gap between worth reanimating, worth sneaking, also castable. Kind of think I'd rather have something to do with one mana, though. Can't reanimate Ulamog. It is pretty dope to sneak, but I'm not going to fill that out too much. Spell Pierce going this late is really weird and concerning to me. That card is phenomenal. Okay, through the breach versus Rampaging Raptor. Raptor is a lot of fast damage. It does fill out my fours. Through the breach is a redundant sneak attack. But I didn't take the Vaultborn Tyrant. I think I'd rather have the kind of ladder outcomes. We did Will Bis Bristly Bill Green looking extremely open on this table. Essica's Chariot also on the wheel. Chariot... Scrubland, I'm not anywhere near white. A Seiju also could go in my deck, but I'm going to play Chariot. This is still a maybe. I like this package. It's cool that I have it. I like having an eject button. Tough Cookie is passive life gain. Also, like a deceptive amount of power and toughness added to the board quickly. Devoted Druid moves me from two to four mana, though, which is where my deck starts to hum. Oh, baby. We got the Tyrant back. Okay, that's interesting. Atraxa didn't wheel, but a very late Vaultborn Tyrant did. What do I do with that information? Final pack, Itali. Okay, uh, that is about as good as a sneak attack thing gets. Like, Emrakul is a little better. There's also Lightning Freaking Bolt in this pack. I think I should be focusing on cheap interaction and either make the game go longer to the point where this comes together, or just don't focus on this. If I got 12th pick, Vaultborn Tyrant, we might get this Atali back. If we don't get Atali, we're definitely getting Questing Beast. Nobody else is in this lane. Fire Covenant's also really, really good. None of these are better than Lightning Bolt, but I'd be happy with one, two, or three on the wheel. Here we've got Generous Plunderer. That's a two drop that ramps me and does a surprising amount of damage. Carnage Interpreter in a deck that is Seriously lacking threes. It's also a discard outlet for my monsters. I think Plunderer is better. I'd rather just kind of be on board. Which one do I think is more likely to wheel? I think I'm extremely likely to get Bloodbraid Challenger back. But I'd rather have Plunderer and Interpreter in my deck than either one and Challenger. Plunderer jumps me from two to four. Same reason I took Devoted Druid over the other options. And my fours are tasty. Grief Liliana, Deathrite Shaman, I only have one fetch lane in my deck. Caustic Bronco, Reckless Pyro Surfer gets pretty low. Liliana, again, a reanimation enabler, also just a thing that exists on the board and causes problems for my opponent. For me, it's either Liliana or Bronco here. I don't think I want Grief. I don't really want to pitch any black cards, and I don't want a, another four drop. What are the base colors of this deck? Black is the Splash, and Liliana's double. Currency Converter is also a looting effect with some passive other abilities. I think I can wheel this Pyro Surfer. All right, I'm taking Bronco. Hard to argue with card advantage. Holy smokes. Fiery Confluence is a 
world class game ender. Blood Crypt would be good for my deck. Headliner Scarlet would be good for my deck, but I think it's Confluence. Bitter Triumph, also a discard enabler and solid removal spell, but this doesn't six ball my opponent when they're struggling to stabilize versus my aggro deck. Tireless Tracker, Headliner Scarlet, Blood Crypt are, are things I'd want on the wheel. I'd even take Mana Confluence in this deck. Fast Bond, extremely late, disrespectful stuff. That means nobody built around it. This Arc Fiend is about as bad as reanimate targets get. Robber the Rich, another two drop that can snowball. Another duel, very likely to wheel that, I think. Though the wheel is getting thin, people might just take mana fixing out of spite. I'm going to take Robber. Oh my goodness, that's a flash. I am nowhere. Or, all right, how can I make blue? I have Mox Diamond. I have no way to fetch a blue source. I have a bunch of treasures, or I have what, one treasure? I have a source of treasures. Everything that's worth sneak attacking is frequently worth flashing. Flashing is bonkers. What else would I take here? Ancient Tomb. Uh, boo, this Ancient Tomb's going to ruin my day. Look at all these fours I have. Got flash this late. And I'm so close. I think if I had one fetchable blue source, I would take flash over Ancient Tomb. But I'm taking the Tomb. Sensei's top burst lightning. I think this is an easy burst lightning. Cheap interaction, damage to the dome. Paradise Druids, another jump from two to four. How many of those do I actually need? At some point, you gotta chill. I don't think I have a reasonable sideboard plan to move into Oath because my deck is all creatures. I at the two slot. Paradise Druid versus Mind Collapse is my choice here. I think I'm gonna take more removal. Might not play either of those. Itali and Fire Cove and Questing Beast, all three of the ones that I kind of wanted back, did come back. Questing Beast fills out my fours that are already full. Itali fills out my sneak attack that's already kind of overloaded. I didn't get that much looting here. Itali's really good, though. I'm going to take Fire Covenant. That's sad. Very excited to see Carnage Interpreter, though. Fire all three of these could go in my deck. Keen Eye Curator. Pretty solid graveyard hate, and if it's ever a 7-7 trample, it's just the biggest thing on Earth. Tireless Tracker and Blood Crypt. I do need threes. However, I did build my deck to jump from two to four. I like Tracker, but I like casting my spells more. Another duel. Mana's pretty solid, just big old Jund here. Epicure. And Reclaimer in the sideboard. All right, uh, this deck... Wants four mana, basically. I have Mox Diamond, Devoted Druid, Generous Plunderer. Did I take that Paradise Druid? No, I didn't. Yeah, the Seasoned Pyromancer didn't come back. I have a Blood Token. I have two Blood Tokens and Generous, or and uh, what is that card? Where is it? Bitter Reunion. That could put these monsters from my hand to the graveyard. I have one way to bring them back. No way to tutor any of this. Carnage Interpreter can also dump them. I'm probably doing it. We're on this deck, this draft screen for so long because they have to sync the pods. Who's in my pod? Oh, we got Ball of O. That's a very good player. And Aspiring Spike. Yep, stacked pod. There's 30 cards in this deck right now, which means I have to cut quite a few. Mind Collapse is my worst removal spell. Baldaren Epicure is my worst one drop and worst discard enabler. As far as mana, we've got a ramp, red green, everything, red green, red black, red black, red. I'm actually just fully equally supporting both green and black in my drafted lands here. Red is, I have slightly more red because of the Arena of Glory. As they sync up the pods, I'm just going to try to build my deck here. Between Essica's Chariot and Rampaging Raptor, I think I have to cut one of these four drops. Trample Haste versus Slow Grind Extra Permanence. I think I'd rather have Trample Haste. This two slot is looking pretty raggedy. I took this Revoker pretty highly out of a, a weak pack. I don't think it's going to make the cut. I think Keen Eye Curator is a sideboard card. GG is just a lot to ask. It's currently 26 spells in front of us here. Mox Diamond goes over here, I guess. I think I'm playing 16 or 17 lands, just because I'm trying to get to 4. I'm trying to support Mox Diamond. My deck is pretty chonky. What does Vol Sleeper actually do? 
B for a 1-1. One, one. B makes it 2-2. Two, two. B1 makes it a 3-3 three, three death touch. 1-BB makes it bigger and you draw a card. I could see that being filler level. If I was lower to the ground and trying to curve out, just really wanted a 1-drop, that's not really what I'm doing here. All my 1s, I have 4 1-mana interaction spells. That's pretty exciting, actually. I could sideboard in Revoker. This is now 24 spells. Both of these are in color. Like, they are theoretically castable. It's not like I have a Emrakul or an Atraxa here that I, I'm just not going to cast. Okay, 16 lands with 2 mana dorks and a Mox Diamond. Blunder or Druid. Bit of Reunion can move cards around for 2 mana. Blood Tide Harvester actually ended up being great in the deck. That was a good early pickup. The spec worked. I'm glad I didn't take that Atrax over Animate Dead. I ended up with so many sick monsters that I ended up passing on an Atali twice. Saw it twice, wasn't interested. The Atrax definitely would have been worse than Animate. If I sort these by color now. Red is the base color. That's good because that's the base mana fixing I got. If I put these over here because I don't really want to cast them. My green is really only Devoted Druid, Bristly Bill, and Minskin Boo. Are there black cards I'd rather play? Like, if I cut Bill, add Mind Collapse or Voldaren Epicure, yeah, this green just became kind of embarrassing once you sort by color. Epicure, I think moving cards around is worth doing. Also a one-drop, so it happens cheap if I'm going to play 16 lands here. Fire Cove could be in the sideboard if I play against creatures. Like, I saw basically no blue spells worth taking for the entire draft. No, somebody's in blue upstream for me. I think Devoted Druid's still worth the squeeze because I have one, two, three, four, five green sources just passively in the deck. I could play one forest. That wouldn't set me back too bad, and I could also fetch it. Among just the drafted mana sources, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine red. I have one, two, three, four, five black. If I add one forest, for Swamp to Mountain, is this deck done? Once I actually get to my deck building screen, I'll debate whether I want a basic forest or not, but otherwise, I think this is the deck. I will see you all in the gameplay. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. Okay, I've made a couple of decisions here. First, I am going to live stream my games, whatever. I'm a content creator, I can handle it. The other, I cut the Devoted Druid because I didn't want to play Basic Forest, and I have Revoker as just additional interaction on Curve, and then I have a pretty robust sideboard, like Revoker and Fire Cove if they're not good. I have Mind Claps if I need more removal, Haywire Might Foundation Breaker if they're big on artifacts. I've got the Graveyard Hate in the Keen-Eyed, whatever that's called, Scavenger Buddy, and I am ready to game. Let's go. Playing against Vazdru in round one. We are on the draw. This is a hand that jumps from two to four mana with the Plunderer. I can interact on one with Burst Lightning if I need to. If they lead on like a Ragavan or Ocelot Pride, I am going to take it out. But hopefully I just get to play Raucous Theater and smooth out my game. That fast bond kicking around late in the pod. There was also a Ramanep Excavator going late in the pod. Somebody could have a pretty cool thing. or an orb was opened. So someone could have infinite life combo in their deck if that didn't just float around to last picks and not get picked up by anyone. I didn't see Strip Mine, but if you don't open Strip Mine, you usually don't see it. I did see a Wasteland going around. We didn't open any power, which means that it's all out there in the draft somewhere if it got opened. This is actually a great hand to just top deck Mox Diamond into. Okay, we both kept seven. Let's do it. Vampiric Tutor. Just turn one Vamp Tutor. That's a little spooky. Any chance they just took a land? Inquisition of Kozlek. Uh, all right, let's find out what's going on over there. What are you trying to assemble? Okay, maybe they did just get a land. And what am I worried about here? They seem to be a 
hyper focused and powerful reanimator deck. The Emperor entering the bone zone is a concern. Void Walker, very good. I bet they 100%. Uh, it, unless they play Black Lotus. It's there is a mana source at the top of their deck, I'm sure of it. I can burst lightning, Emperor or Void Walker if they lead on those. I'm fairly confident I'm just taking reanimate here. I just want to think about it. Yeah, they're likely to play bat. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm taking reanimate. Okay. We might be bringing in the the raccoon, homie. What's that card even called? Keen-Eyed Curator. Raccoon Scout. Yep, they vamp for Dark Slick Shores. And Voidwalker, okay. I can kill that. If I think it's right to kill that, compared to getting on board. Because the alternative is, I get Plunderer in, I start ramping mana and hitting them. The bat takes my burst lightning because that makes the most sense. And then I have to fade the bone zone for a while. I think I'd rather be on board with Plunderer. They're attacking first. There's the bat. It's probably going to take burst lightning unless they're scared of me just dropping sneak attack and tick tock. Motherfucker. Because I can cast sneak attack this turn and then it's just in the bank. But if they don't take burst lightning, I just burst the bat and get the sneak back. But anything I sneak ends up in the void. All right, yeah, there are some concerns here. I would like to make treasures. I didn't put this card in my deck to not make treasures. Fiery Confluence, this is what we signed up for. I think I'm going to... Yeah, I could just sweep everything next turn. Like I, I could even Confluence for one, which kills Bat and Master of Death, leaving Emperor of Bones and Generous Bunder, or I could just sweep everyone's everything. That sounds so insane. I guess the question is, do I want to get this sneak attack into play first? I want to attack first, just take three, and then we'll have the rest of this conversation. Because banking the sneak, blue-black is not going to be good at answering this. All right, sneak's in the bank. I have two insane draws at this point, and you could even just sneak in, like, a creature. Like Carnage Interpreter, just put it in. Get for five. Preordain, okay. That means they're not going to be able to Emperor and adapt it, which is the thing I really didn't want them to do this turn. They top-bottomed, played a land. I know two of their three cards in hand. Please don't thought seize me. Oh, they paid life. Is this Metamorph? It is Metamorph. Oh, wow. Another bat's gross here. That sucks real bad. At least it's not in the void, but that is a really shitty card for me to lose access to. Now I'm looking for a Lightning Bolt to start... Unlocking my my spells here. Do I make the treasures actually? Because they can adapt the emperor immediately, and then they have a four four. And four four is bigger than most of what I'm presenting. But if I draw like Chandra or Minskin Boo or Rampaging Raptor, all right, I am gonna make the treasure. They do have two artifacts now, so this guy's hitting pretty hard. Mind twist would be good. Okay, let's start. Break it down the walls over there. I can boop, boop, end up with all the goods. Take four before we do anything. Trigger, bonk, there are 10. And now I have a decision to make. Raucous Theater, I do have double red. I can bolt, unlock, burst lightning, then kill something else. I don't want to Raucous Theater any spell into the void, but I think I'd keep almost any spell here anyway. Yeah, that one does a million damage. All right, cool. I am happy with... How this turn went. There's nothing in the graveyard for the Emperor to shallow grave, and they hit their land drop anyway, which means they could have boned even without my treasure, so I'm glad I gave it to them. I know their whole hand right now. They're in for five. Two of these jerks have lifelink. Do I want to... Does lifelink matter? Okay, so the Death Greater Champion is a 2-2 two -two double strike, or two power double strike by itself. It backs up the plunder into a 3-3 three -three double strike. They go to 12. They take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Might just be dead. Or Fiery Confluence finish them off at the end. Yeah, I don't think I'm worried about Lifelink right now. I could even Sneak Attack. That saves a lot of mana on this play. Wow, I don't even have to dash it. Master's in. They Surveil 2. Emperor's in. Okay, so I have a Menace Attacker. I will have an extra Treasure next turn. I'm deciding if I want to Bolt in the end step. Yes, I think Fiery Confluence is just lethal. I deal one to everything. 
Or, yeah, ideal one to everything. Oh, uh, the Emperor would survive that. Oh, one to everything, four to them. So they're at eight. This hits them for two. It has double strike, so it hits them for seven. Unfortunately, the artifact is the one that's holding the fiery confluence. Let me just figure out if there's a sequence here that does everything I want. I have one, two, three, four red mana. That's enough to do all of this next turn. The fiery confluence is not an instant, and I would need this trigger. I could bolt this bat, get back burst lightning. Oh, wait. The fire confluence will kill this bat and get back burst lightning, and that's the last two I need. Yeah, with four red mana, I can burst lightning, activate sneak attack, cast fiery confluence. I think that's everything I need to do. Yeah, get back. Okay, bolt this in the end step. And they're hellbent. No tricks over there. Give you a treasure. Draw for turn. When this creature enters, so it will. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything on the rules of backup. Not a, a mechanic I play a lot with. Red, red, one, two. Confluence, one to all creatures, four to my opponent. I could also burst lightning Emperor of Bones or burst lightning face after combat. This works either way. I guess I'd rather just burst the Emperor. Get rid of you. Then backup's coming. This is a million damage. Remember when I took that Death Greater Champion pretty high in the draft? It was like fourth or fifth pick, and I was like, this is a signal. These are these spots where it's just, you started the turn at 12, and now you're dead to at negative three. Okay, opponents, a powerful reanimator deck. Keen Eye Curator, I think, is necessary to come in. I'm a little worried about having my own big chunk guy in the deck that they can discard and then reanimate. They also have Dothy Voidwalker, which can backdoor into that. We saw the, the Lord of Bones. I didn't see a lot for Revoker. In the the Bone Guy and Dothy Voidwalker have activated abilities, but that's not really what I'm looking for with this. I'm looking for Planeswalkers. I'm looking for Black Lotus. I think I need to go. I need to play the Basic Forest if I'm having this green green card in the deck. Just need one more source for that. If I'm doing that, do I now want Devoted Druid to increase the speed of my four drops? I like all the one drop interaction. I still need another cut to make room for Mind Collapse, which I think is good enough. Fire Cove, actually insane against a board full of bats. Gotta watch out for that Phyrexian Metamorph as well if I do get a Tyrant or Archon into play. Mind Twist might enable them, but I think it's still worth it. Thunder Reunion would be a little risky to just hang one of these in the graveyard with Bitter Reunion. I could cut this package entirely, play normal magic, operate out of their graveyard with my animate dead. Like, I don't need set up for that. What does this look like? Just bring in all these, cut all this stuff. Just play kind of normal magic against them. Yeah, I'm going to try this. Old strategy, big pivot. Transformational sideboard. Hand is nuts, though. Mind Twist is a lot worse when you're not accelerating into it at all. Like, there's... I... Didn't draft a dark ritual. I saw a cabal ritual in the draft, but I didn't see a, a dark. Hey, do I want to leave up push or bolt? I think I'd rather leave up push because bolt going face is part of my end game. I could have shocked in blood grip to do either, but I can't imagine a situation where I would need either or both. Hey, Soren, yeah, bolt doesn't even kill that. We did it, team. Days is in the cube. I think I saw it in the draft too. Yeah, I'm not going to push right now. I can leave up Lightning Bolt and then push this here. And we're getting to the spot where Mind Twist is pretty good. If they have three or four cards in hand, Twisting for two might mess their game up. Ooh, an Herb Work. Thanks for that. Got the layup. Liliana. Don't like that very much, but I do have shit I'm happy to discard, or at least I won't miss. Discard this mountain. They dump Torsten, which is a very good reanimate target. Time to draw Animate Dead right off the top. Okay. I think I want to twist them for two and then try to win with Minsk and Boo next turn. I'd like to see Reanimate go to the graveyard now. I am playing into days, but I'm not going to twist for one to play around days. Force Negation, Time Walk, hit the graveyard. Those were not Reanimates, but losing Time Walk is pretty fire. And that force would have dealt with Minsk and Boo. Funny enough, those two cards getting discarded is exactly the same as if they had countered the Mind Twist with Force Negation. 
You would discard the tap land, and they are now hellbent versus Minskin Boo. Let's do it. They're going to have to draw reanimate here. And I am going to attack Liliana so they can't minus her. Three counters on Boo. Attack Liliana. I just don't want that thing sitting around at five. If they do draw reanimate, seven, seven trades with Boo. Each player discards a card. Uh, I mean, I'm hellbent. I would rather have Carnage Interpreter in hand. That's just a 5-5 five, five on the house. Discard my hand. I don't care. Liliana did that already. Sick. Yeah, we're just fully insane out here. Carnage Interpreter. I think getting Boo to 7 is better than drawing 4. Is that even true? I could kill Liliana, dome them for 4, fill my hand. Oh, it Animate deads in my deck. I'm going to kill Liliana, then dome them for four. Kill Liliana. Do I want to fetch first? If it's a land out of the way, because of their Urborg, my basic forest is a bayou, and Taiga is a tri land. Right, yeah, Taiga is just money in the bank here. All right, I'm going to sack Boo. Deal four, draw four. Evolved Sleeper. Put that into play. And. Off we go. They are on reanimate or bust. And reanimate does put them to nine life. Four mana, five mana. Fallen Shinobi, just raw, down and dirty. Gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, there's that one again. We we just call it out. And it appears. Suit up Boo. I can make Boo double strike. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. It's not enough to double spell. I can single spell and crack some clues this turn. If I'm going to do that, I should crack the clue first. Or I could evolve my sleeper. Plenty of blockers for this. I'm not worried about it. I think I should draw a card. Just a swamp. Play this mountain and this trades with Shinobi. This just puts my opponent to garbage. Do they have forced blocks if I dash this? So if I dash this, give Boo double strike. That's 10 in the bank and puts them at 6. If they block Carnage Interpreter, Leaf Fall, and Shinobi alive, they'd be at 1. Yeah, I actually should not have drawn a card. I actually had a forced block on one of the bigger creatures. I could also put the counter on Carnage Interpreter. Yeah, Boo is replaceable. All right, yeah, Carnage Interpreter is getting in. And I'm just casting this as normal cast mode. Interpreter is a 4-4 double strike. Then it gives me two creatures worth attacking with. Okay, they're trading with the boo straight up. Now reanimate's not even... I guess they could go to one. But yeah, they're dead if they reanimate. Okay, feeling good. I messed up that last turn though. That was just a miscount situation. Or fail to count situation. I didn't miscount. I just didn't count. That's pretty big. And has lifelink. Evolve the Sleeper. What do you get? Death Touch? Yeah, it does. I would like a Boo. Generous Plunderer. Okay, 5-6. That's a lot. I can't get to one card in hand because I have two lands here. Or no, I can I can land double spell and make this a 6-6 six, six Menace. Oh, that just wins, right? Yeah, okay. Never mind, I win. Right, Swamp. Raptor. Plunderer. Attack for six menace, then throw this thing after combat. Somehow, Minsk and Boo on an empty board managed to win a game of limited. We got the GGs. Their deck was pretty scary, and knowing that we're in pod play means that I don't have to play against Reanimate anymore, or Torsten, or Time Walk. Time Walk is the best card in the whole cube. That's out of the pool now. All right, that's exciting. On to round number two of draft number one. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic.
I'm on the draw in round number two of the draft playing against Super Touch. My hand's a little land heavy, but Caustic Bronco draws cards. I have one mana interaction. I will keep this. Unfortunately, there's no sequence of mana where I could give this Caustic Bronco haste on turn two. It's not a thing that's possible. I will get my tap land in while it's tapped. If they dash Ragavan this turn, they got me. Arena of Glory enters tap unless you have a mountain. And while I do have three red sources in my hand, none of them are mountains. So that's going to be something I want to manage. Ledger Shredder. I think I just want to bolt this. Get it out of the way. If they daze, picking up Xander's Lounge, that's pretty gnarly. Or would I rather be on board with my card draw homie? But cutting out their card draw homie, I think I'd rather be on board. Okay, Caustic Bronco's coming in. It's like one of these things where Lightning Bolt might not kill Ledger Shredder later. But knowing that I have the enemy dead and the reanimates out of the draft, I'm less worried about a loot. Drawing this Blood Crypt means Arena of Glory will come in untapped eventually, and I'm just going to sandbag this as long as possible to surprise them with a haste creature. Caustic Bronco could be a little scary. I do have a 7 and an 8 drop in the deck, but in general, my stuff's pretty slow. That card is a nightmare. I'm basically going to have to combo this opponent at this point. I'm not going to beat them on the ground. Minsk and Boo overloads Trune and Mimesis, but basically dead in 7 turns. Full stop. I need Menace. I need Trample. Sneak attack. Okay, I'm going to bolt the Shredder. Let's just be done with that. And I'm going to play Blood Crypt tapped and pass. I'm not going to delete Caustic Bronco for a card, but if they want to attack with True Name, then I get to start Bronking. And the 7 and 8 drops in my deck flip the script and become insane if I could saddle the Bronco where they're taking the damage. Dark Ritual. Uh oh. It's not quite Black Lotus, but it's close. I hope they just play out like three creatures that die to fiery confluence. That's the best case scenario here. Souls of the Lost discarding Grave Titan. And Shallow Grave and Grave Titan. I mean, that sucks. <laughs> okay. So they did backdoor into kind of a the janky reanimator, but I've still been reanimated here. I'm just going to take nine and they get a bunch of dorks. But my wish was fulfilled of them filling the board with shit that dies to Fiery Confluence. Okay, do I want to risk taking 8 right now? Because Bronco's going to die when I Confluence anyway. If I take 4, I have a bunch of 4s, I go to 6, then True Name hits me, I'm at 3. If I take 3, I actually think I just don't attack with this thing, which is super embarrassing, but can't really afford to. Let me read Souls of the Lost, make sure I'm not going to Tarmogoyf myself here. Number of permanent cards in your graveyard. Okay, there's 2 permanents in their graveyard, unless they can... If they have, like, Troll of Kazadoom, they blow me out here. That's a permanent they could get in their graveyard. I'm just going to cop with 3 to each creature. All right. True Name Nemesis versus Sneak Attack, Dual Decks. I have Archon in my deck that completely stabilizes. I have... Uh-oh. Him to Turok hit the Bitter Reunion. That's fine. Archon completely stabilizes. Vault Tyrant does a lot to stabilize. Opponent's Hellbent. I think I should fire up these vents. In a discard stomping ground, draw a card, mind twist. That's not very good at this point. Green of Glory's in. Okay, it is just a race and a top deck war. I'm at four. They're still hellbent. Archon wins the game. Epicure. Epicure can loot away the twist, but so can attacking. I'm just gonna attack. Attack, loot away mind twist. Inquisition, also a brick. Epicure, one you, I'm at one. I get a redraw, but it is, uh, I'm against the wall here. Oh no, they're tapping mana. Thieving Skydiver steals my blood token. That's cheating. Okay, right now, I have to rip one of my Chungos. Come on, deck two outer. Death Creator Champion, that's not it. I'm just reviewing my deck list real quick, making sure there's no other outs. Yeah, True Name Nemesis, too good. And I don't want to reveal any other cards to my opponent. Soloed. Okay, what am I doing here? They are a pseudo reanimator. They have at least one thing to do in the graveyard, one big thing. I might be curating here again. I actually definitely want these top end things. That true name was a big problem all on its own. There's no passive life gain in my sideboard. Haywire might, not what I'm looking for. A land for land, and then I need another card to go. We saw him to Turok. 
That Caustic Bronco was embarrassing, but that's mostly because they played True Name Nemesis, not for any reason inherent in the card. Did I see anything I need to revoke? I don't think so. I mean, Revoker was my 40th card when I was building the deck. I mentioned that at the start and sideboarding out for any of these other cool twos that I have was always the plan. Okay, let's try it. I will keep this. It jumps to four mana. It messes with them on turn one, and it selects some of these lands away. Awkwardly, if I want to cast Minskin Boo on turn three, I have to shock in Blood Crypt right now. I don't want to do that, though. I'll just wait. Inquisition you. Him to Turok Mox Ruby Brainstorm. That's interesting. If I take Brainstorm, their hand is the shit. They could also just hit me on turn one, but my hand's really good at absorbing that. Yeah, I'm taking that Brainstorm. Get out of here. I play Legacy. I know how this works. Island. That doesn't cast him. They must have found something else to do. Turn one true name. God damn it. <laughs> okay. We're going to need to reanimate them. Uh, that should have been Taiga. I'm just spewing off now. Okay, I'm not going to blood yet. Because if they try to him me... I mean, they need double black somehow. There is a Bowmaster in the, the draft. Do I do this to loot away a land? I think so. Get rid of this mountain. Plunderer. Keen Eye Curator. I can cast and start activating that next turn. Plunderer. Epicure, get in. I have a chance to race this true name, actually, because they do have a artifact, naturally, that Plunderer can ping off of. If they hem me here, lost my Ancient Tomb and my Curator. Not going to have a 7-7 Trample to challenge the true name anymore. I big draws. I am going to clue them up. Or treasure them up, whatever these are. That sucks. I could fetch Raucous Theater and get some selection here. I am now ahead in the race, though. They're up to three cards in hand. We know one of them's a land. Losing that curator was tough, but him to her a good card when you only have three cards in your hand. If I had played Taiga the turn before, like I was supposed to, that could have been in play instead of the Plunderer. Okay, they played another Swamp. Rather than the Bloodstained Mire that we've seen since turn one, they're sandbagging that fetch land for something. I guess that Souls of the Lost is a card in their deck. Ledger Shredder. And we know the last card in their hand. Raucous Theater. Find me some action. Theater. Come on, Minskin Boo. Mox Diamond. Eat shit. I am going to treasure them up again. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is the number. Take five first. They could float a treasure and take one less. Let's see if they do it. This is exactly the type of thing we need to go over the top of True Name. Generous Plunderer, just a ramp spell that also deals a million to your opponent. Now I feel very comfortable in this game that I was very worried about before this draw step. 13, have a 6-6 six, six Trample. They're going to have to do something really big, and one of the cards in their hand is Bloodstained Mire. They can hardcast Grave Titan if they draw it. That's a concern. Play another Swamp, still holding on to that Mire. And no attacks, we're in there. Keep giving them treasures. Okay, uh, the Plunder has Menace, and the other creature has Trample. I'm just attacking with everything. The Epicure is not really a good block, no matter where you put it here. And just get that one point in the mix, make them deal with it. They're at seven, double blocking Plunderer and dying. That's why the Epicure got into combat, that one point. Sick. Okay. My top end is there. My top end both are good checks to True Name Nemesis. My opponent had to rip and then have three mana on turn one for that to even be a game that we were playing. So I actually feel kind of good structurally here. The curator has been revealed now. Not that that changes anything. I've seen Mox Ruby and Lotus Petal that I could name with Revoker proactively. But if I'm going to shit out treasures for them, it's not great. We've seen Thieving Skydiver and Ledger Shredder. Maybe I want Mind Collapse just as an extra boop in the deck. On the draw with Mind Twist, is this card going to be good? I want all my interaction. I want all my threats. With my life total being a concern versus True Name Nemesis, and I can't kill True Name Nemesis with this, is Mind Collapse just better than Covenant, maybe? The Covenant can clear a board full of Grave Titan dopes. It's going to hurt, but so is getting hit with all those same creatures. Yeah, that's interesting. That's that's tight. I think 
the more efficient thing. I have Fiery Confluence that can clean up a Grave Titan sneak, and now I have Graveyard that I can challenge. All right. I am making that decision. I have the Inquisition again. Don't turn one me. Keep cheap interaction, folks. It's very good in Magic and especially in Cube. There's the pedal. How about you chill? Just chill. Pass the turn. Okay, they pass the turn. Okay, with this stomping ground now in the mix, I was going to fetch shock Blood Crypt. Now I don't think I have to. Maybe I didn't have to anyway. I'm going to get basic swamp. Let's have a look. Fetching in response. They could be brainstorming away three drops. They could have a counter spell, but that still get Inquisitions the counter spell out of their hand. Dark ritual in response. Holy shit. Okay, Bowmaster confirmed in their deck. They did get it. And their hand is a bunch of uncastable cards. Okay. You know, as far as things go, I can cleanly answer Bowmaster next turn, and their hand is a bunch of shit right now. That swamp is the start to them getting into the game. I'm actually just going to play Bronco. It's bigger than their creatures, and it's on curve, and they can't snuff it out. This costs three mana to Madness, so I'm not worried about a discard outlet like Souls of Lost right now. Brainstorm does change everything I know. That's why Brainstorm's so good. Carnage Interpreter immediately saddles Caustic Bronco whenever I feel like I need to do that. I'm not going to do that now because my hand is too good. I don't want to discard it. We know they also have Bloodstained Mire in the deck, and they found it as far as shuffling away the bad cards off of Brainstorm. And no attacks. Good news. Mox Diamond. Here's this in a spot where I guess playing Mox Diamond leaves a land drop up if I want to Bronco here. If I Bronco and take eight, how bad is that? If I take four, I mean, they're not true naming me. I'm going to giddy up here. Bronco, get after it. Trigger. Land would be great. Makes the Mox Diamond perfect. Curator. Okay. It took two from that. If they double block, I can bolt and clear everything. We got the double block. Now the question is, do I want to bolt? I think I do. Or Burst Lightning is better than bolt. And by better, I mean worse. Okay, so we got that. And Mox Diamond is like playing Stomping Ground, except it doesn't cost me two life. Diamond. Oh, fuck. They have Thieving Skydiver. This could be a huge mistake. Do I just put this in the graveyard, take my medicine, be embarrassed about it? Oh, that I wish I thought of that before I cast it. Fuck, that's embarrassing. All right. Changed my mind. Go ahead. <laughs> I would rather be embarrassed and put that card in the graveyard than get got by Thieving Skydiver. Just the insane three for one. Fetch Sanders Lounge. Some of these cards are probably not in their hand anymore. If they've assembled Land Souls of the Lost, Shadow Grange Archfiend, that's pretty awful for me. If I can get Curator down, that takes some pressure off. But if they held on to this snuff out, it doesn't matter. Him to Turok took two things that were not Curator. Lost my bolt. That stinks. Curator can saddle the Bronco, though. All right, you get in. That might have been why they were trying to double block last turn. Saddle three. And let's go. Can we eight ball them? Eight ball, eight ball. Take two. All right, I'll take two. That's fine. They go to 12, and then Harvester can saddle next turn. If they snuff out, they take so much damage. And if they don't snuff out, their graveyard engines are off. I really need to fade them madnessing this thing in. That's how they flip this, I think, right now. And in the pool, true name Nemesis. Yeah, I mean, that card's good. We know that one. Can I get Exile Delirium and just have a 7-7 trample? Probably. But if this snuff out is still in their hand, they may have brainstormed it away when my only threat was black. This pause in the end step is interesting, though. Okay, they do have the snuff. They're going to 8. That is not a high life total. This just tramples over True Name. I like that. And then I can save the saddle for next turn. Just deal 3 to them. Harvester can saddle whenever I need it to. Put you to 5. Cost me nothing. Oh, this is tight. It's so close. There's definitely cards that could flip it. But I am ahead right now if their hand is bad. We got the GG's.
Wow. Yeah, that Mox Diamond was a mistake. Uh, I think there's so there's two lessons there. One, the more important lesson, don't forget what you've seen in your opponent's deck. But also, two, if you do start to make a mistake, don't compound it by being too afraid of being embarrassed about compounding your mistake. Like I think getting Skydiver there is so much worse than just discarding Mox Diamond for no reason. But the Mox Diamond is obviously devastating because they him to Turok to me a turn later and having a full blank in my hand would have been awesome for him to Turok it. You know, like obviously a huge mistake, but I think bringing back from the mistake by just being like, yeah, that was embarrassing. Land drop, go. Uh, two big important lessons there. But we are on to the finals of this first pod. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. We are in the finals of the first draft versus Bolovo, famous Magic Online grinder. I am going to keep my hand as some cheap interaction. As far as what I think the deck might be, we have seen Spell Pierce go really late in the draft. Itali and Flash both were up for pickings. Remnant of Excavator and Fast Bond. Uh, I haven't played against a real blue deck yet. Also, the white aggro deck that was floating around hasn't appeared yet. Okay. I'm just going to attack and pass. I have two removal spells up. Kind of hope that he is white aggro because that makes my hand really good. If we start seeing just guy control emerge, my hand gets suspicious. Another planes, that's a good start. Selfless spirit, sure. Now I have to decide if I want to lightning bolt or fatal push this, or if I want to do anything to it at all. Could just attack into it. And then the blood token's really interesting because sneak attack's pretty far away from being useful right now. Dumping that, I wouldn't feel too bad about. But if I dump sneak attack and use my blood token and then draw one of my monsters, the animate dead becomes really embarrassing where right now I actually have an in-hand, I have two in-hand payoffs for that. I think I'm just going to hold the blood. Oh, blood turns on fatal push, so I'm actually going to bolt here. And then I can kill a four drop. Come on, deck. Archon of Cruelty. Swamp. All right. I don't mind blooding away Swamp. That one's fine. Now I am likely to use the blood this turn, especially if a three drop is cast. Okay. Land go. I'm going to hold the blood. Stomping ground. Attack. There is the bird, the 2-2 two -two that plots a spell. I'm going to run out Stomping Ground and pass. Old Aaron Epicure is doing 20 this game. Count it. Karn Scion, okay. A surprising twist. Four planes, Karn Scion. Oh, here's some more planes. All right, so planes in hand, planes in the silver zone. I really want to push this advantage, but I also really want to keep Fatal Push up on a four drop. Maybe even five drop at this point. I'm going to blood. I'm going to discard Swamp. Harvester, okay, the blood continues to flow. Carnage Interpreter. Not what I'm looking for. I think I should apply pressure to Karn. I, this Epicure is just not going to kill my opponent, is the problem. Red, black. Doing a little better here. Additional bloods. Fatal push still on. Blessing Karn again. Even Interrupter and Flicker Wisp. Uh, you can have Flicker Wisp. What do I do here? Choose one card for them to keep. Yeah, you keep Flicker Wisp and then Interrupters under the, the bucket. Not going to activate the blood. I'm chilling. If they play Flicker Wisp and target my blood, I'll just use it and kill Flicker Wisp. Ooh, champ. This is a big dash turn. 
I could also just cast it, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile. There's a lot of stuff here that is bad news for me. If I just cast this, though, it leaves up Fatal Push, and I don't get mana tithed, and I do kill Karn. Reprieve, buy some time here. Okay, backing up the Harvester. Attack opponent and attack Karn. Solitude's a powerful card that smears my entire board and it doesn't get fatal pushed. It's also a really good cash out for this Flicker Wisp. Yep, this is starting to turn. That was ended up being a rough turn. Yeah, I should have had that on my radar. Just five white mana. What's the worst thing that could happen? Definitely that. I could have mitigated a little bit by simply not attacking with the Epicure. I would have just like had a material left in play. Now they can start doing stuff like grabbing Aven Interrupter. Plus in Karn still. Uh, you can have Mana Crypt, I guess, and make you work for Elspeth. There's the Crypt. I'm going to have to go over the top at this point. Oh, Black Lotus revealed. Mana Crypt, Black Lotus. Okay. the One of the strongest players in the, the whole event has these two cards in their deck. That's scary. Five mana for Batter Skull. Okay. Now, Fatal Push the Germ or Fatal Push Flicker Wisp. And they can just re equip Batter Skull. And I have to wait until Solitude actually kills something or else Fatal Push doesn't do anything here. Yeah, I think I'm going to push the Flicker Wisp and hope to draw Archon of Cruelty. Mountain. Yikes. Do I just invest in Sneak Attack here? Just put it into play and try to shred next turn? What does that even look like? The Aven Interrupter can plot all my shit next turn, so I think getting Sneak Attack in is worth doing, because that's not a spell. I'm at 24 life right now. Add the Reprieve. Disappointing. Okay, definitely falling behind. That Solitude turn was really big. I could have played around that. And they have 7 lifelinks, so this Mana Crypt is just free as hell. Guide of Souls. It's even more life, even more value. Ocelot Pride. Jesus. We're so fucked. I'm not even convinced that Archon wins anymore. Adeline, here comes everything. This is so many tokens. Uh, Fire Covenant is completely insane. The Construct, all of the... The Adeline token, the Ocelot token, and the Construct token are all going to get copied in the end step. Adeline token. And I'm going to blood away Carnage Interpreter, because I am just fully in emergency mode at this point. The Ocelot triggers, makes all these tokens... Guide of Souls goes crazy off. Blood Away Carnage Interpreter. Minsk and Boo, not close to competitive. Wow. All right. Yep. Uh, that Solitude Blowout was bad, but they've got a lot going on over there. I mean, Mind Collapse coming in. I already have the Revoker in. I don't care about Graveyard Hate. I don't want to go green here. Naming Karn, Elspeth, Black Lotus, Mana Crypt. Revoker is great here. I need a pivot for Mind Collapse. What comes out? I like all this spot removal. Flicker Wisp is really rough on Mox Diamond. I mostly like all these cards. Fiery Confluence, that would have been a good draw that last turn as well. I have a lot of game here. So I'm multiple Planeswalkers. I like the Raptor. Though this isn't like the most horrendous thing imaginable. It's just uh, I can't let them get off the ground like that again. Or grind me into the dirt. I did spend that whole game with two blanks in my hand, waiting for one of these to show up, which did hurt me. But also, if I had drawn one of these, it was the best thing I could have done. I'm not cutting this package. Mind Twist does feel really slow here, especially if they're playing to the board. But we did see Reprieve and Solitude, which are cards I'd love to take away. Yeah, this is tough. I definitely want Mind Collapse, though. Maybe Robber of the Rich just isn't that good on stats against Mono White. Maybe I don't want to ramp this deck with Plunderer. Though, they have a bunch of artifacts of their own. Is Haste more important than Ramp? I really like Ramping. That's how I can cast Archon of Cruelty. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright, this hand looks familiar. I'm in. Now I have more information about their deck. Fire Covenant, though, was not present last game. Okay, let's see if they can make that control game happen again. Mono White Control. Figure of Destiny. Just gonna attack. Happy to trade with a figure while it's still stupid. Blood Crypt tapped. They level up figure. I can bolt it. Or I could just take two and let them sink mana on turn three into it. No blocks here. 
are going for the level. I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to go to my turn. Not blooding yet. I'd really like to actually hit something. This gets raucous theater. That's more selection. Now we're in an awkward spot where if I ever tap out, they can level figure. If I ever bolt, they can level figure. But if they level figure, I can bolt it. But if they're going to leave up figure, then they're not spending mana other ways. I think I'm favored in this standoff. Okay, that gives me big moves. Before they go into combat, I'm going to fire Cov for six. Just take the medicine here. That turn means I can't get Raucous Theater, but that's okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's get those out of here. Hope that's good. I could animate dead Adeline and flip it on them now. Okay, animate Adeline and go to combat. Okay, two, three removal spells in hand, and I'm ahead on board. Let's see if I can make this work. Passing without a play doesn't necessarily mean they don't have anything, but I'm definitely attacking. Flicker Wisp gets them Adeline back. Flicker Wisp doesn't have flash, though. He would have done that main phase. Dismembering Adeline. Can't do anything to save her. Yeah, she's gone. That's fine. That's a, another big crack of damage. It's less damage than Adeline represented on the game, so it was definitely the correct play, but I am okay with the exchange. Creature land pump in now. Got a mana sink. I could mind collapse this selfless spirit, or I could just run my 1-1s into it. Yeah, I don't care if they trade with this. Raucous Theater. Let me see what I'm drawing and then make good decisions. Caustic Bronco. Is that even good here? And it's not nothing. It's never getting crude. It is a threat. I actually just have lethal damage in my hand if I don't get mana tithed. Yeah, I'll start by just attacking. And they are taking the trade. Glad I didn't waste a mind collapse on that. Fiery Confluence. Two damage to each opponent. They're at two. And I'm not going to cast the bolt into mana tithe. Like they have to answer the board, which costs mana, and then also leave up interaction, which costs mana. And if at any point I feel like the shields are down, just bolt. This isn't a slow roll, it's playing around stuff. All right, cool. Now I don't know how I could ever lose this one. I have a lethal attack on board and two lethal spells in hand versus three mana. Source to plowshares in response, burst lightning. Haven interrupter, lightning bolt. Boom, we did it. Okay, burn at the end. All right, one game to rule them all. Robber the Rich, even worse on the draw, still happy with that change. Are any of my green cards good enough here to consider? I mean, Bristly Bill scales up as the game goes on, which is nice versus their creatures. I don't want Essica's Chariot. I don't want Keen Eye Curator. I don't think I want to go all the way up to five. Like, is my is making my mana worse worth Bristly Bill? And I think the answer is no. Okay, here we go. On the draw versus Mono White. Deck full interaction. Let's make it work. All right, that Epicure showing up strong every game. Oh, Mind Collapse costs four. Why did I think this was a two drop? <laughs> All right, my bad. I definitely thought this card cost two the entire time I drafted and played with it. I, you saw me put it in the two drop pile so many times. I'm sure the comments have already eviscerated me. The cool thing about Mind Collapse is even if it does set me back like a thousand years, if they go turn one Lotus Elspeth, I can actually clear that. Epicure three for three. It's like I'm playing Popper over here. Luminarch Aspirant, that card's pretty good. Bronco, get in. Mind Collapse, I can only sack the mountain on my own turn. So it's not a combat trick for free. It is a combat trick or you know, general trick, not really combat related. It is a trick for four mana though. Just regular old instant. Got a 2-3 and a 2-2. Two, two. I did not expect them to offer the trade and they didn't. Oh, the Cov. That's really good. I think I want to wait for their turn. Because if they have Reprieve, I'm not trying to get smoked on that right now. Like, at least make them cast their own mana. And if they do something like shove Adeline, I just get the sweep. Trigger. I'm not going to play into counter magic over one extra life here. Okay. Now in the end step, this is a very expensive thing to play into Aven Interrupter but I think it's worth it. It's expensive to reprieve too, because you pay the life as a cost. Yeah, so that hurts, but I still have the sweep available now. My life total is just in pain. All right, send it right back. 
they are gone. And now I have to come back from that. I'm not going to attack with Caustic Bronco. There are literally cards in my deck that kill me. How big is their follow-up? Does it beat Mind Collapse Chandra? I can kill two X4s this turn, or an X4 and an X5, or an X9. Are there even X9s? This does not gain them life. It does give them two fish. It's pretty good. A 4-5, happy to kill that. Okay. Now figure out what I actually do here. I can cast a lot of spells. If I fetch shock, I will have access to green, or I could give up on green to do this painlessly. Oh, I have Tiga in my deck. Nope, free money. Okay. Um, here we go. Fetch for Tiga. Play Chandra. Leave up black. Make mana. Red, red. Play Blood Tithe Harvester, who can saddle the thing. Mine collapse. Sack a mountain. Kill this 4 5 they just played. Saddle this up and go to combat. I'm gonna actually gonna leave Epicure back. They took four off the attack trigger. They can double block to clear this. That felt like a big turn. They're deciding if the double block versus leaving material around is a better play right now. They've seen sneak attack go to my hand. They know I have mana to play and activate it with Chandra. I can also just roast X4s moving forward. Sideboard mind collapse. That, that was so insane right there. It's free spells. Changing the rules. They are going for at least one block, and they're taking the trade. Okay. Uh, their creature that generated Dingus's trade with my creature that generated a card and four damage. General good exchange there for everyone. Leaving four planes untapped and passing the turn. The Interceptor has not appeared yet. I'm going to plus Chandra for spells. Do I want to do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I can't double spell here. I'm going to plus Chandra for damage or cards. Fall poor Tyrant, shit. Wish I had the blood token. Wish I could cast it. Can't, though. Take a bunch. Do I want to play into the Interceptor? I don't want to play into Mana Tithe. Sneak Attack does get Rampaging Raptor in. Okay, I am going to play Rampaging Raptor pre-combat. If they have Interceptor, I can Harvest to kill it. And if they don't, I just Ranch for a million. Okay. Flash Creatures. Well, the Interceptor, I think, would have been played here unless they're on some genius combat line to eat Epicure in combat, buff it somehow, deal 7. Wandering Emperor. Okay, yeah, well, that card exists as well. Haven't seen that one yet. But that's fine. With Vaultborn Tyrant out of the deck, I think I want to blood away the sneak attack. Opponent's at 10. Chandra's still pumping. Wandering Emperor's at 1, which means it dies if it makes a 2 2. If they get to 5 mana here and start representing Solitude, the game gets more complicated. Chandra ultimates turns after next, though. And I do have two bloods. And Blood Tithe Harvester can minus 4, minus 4 a creature if I don't use the bloods. I could kill two X4s or an X up to an X8 with the things that I have right now. If I use a blood, I could kill an X6. If they don't present a threat, I have to answer. Chandra just goes. The Black Lotus and Mana Crypt, knowing that they're in the mix somewhere, could just suddenly unlock a series of cards that are really bad. Their deck represents way more than the four mana they've been playing on for a while. They have Sarah Paragon into... They can cast Guide of Souls immediately. Okay. That is a bunch of life available. They could plus one of these things now. Makes it bigger than Chandra. Chandra can still work with the Harvester to finish it off, though. I'm going to Blood Away Sneak Attack. There's only one hit for that left in the deck. Revoker can name the Emperor. I think I have to clear this Paragon. It has Flying, which is a big problem. It casts all this other shit in subsequent turns. Also a big problem. I could Blood Away. No, I can't because I need the Blood. Uh, yeah, this is starting to turn a little bit. They don't have any energy to buff with Guide of Souls. Oh, I can activate this first, and then Blood. All right. Minus two, minus two, the Paragon. And then Blood away Arena of Glory. Oh. Okay, I have a plan moving forward. Kill four to Sarah Paragon. Revoke the Wandering Emperor. And I have... A Planeswalker in play and a better one in my hand. They have four cards in hand and five mana. We know Solitude is in the deck. We know Aven Interrupter is in the deck. Reprieve's already been used. Figures back. 
That's one energy. Shit. Yeah, that's enough energy to kill Chandra. Fuck. That's really bad. Oh, wait, no. Yes, it is. No, it is. Because if they stack this, yeah, they can stack it correctly, and it will result in enough energy, and opponent, unfortunately, knows how this works. Yeah, they get the life, then this trigger resolves, and then they can make this a uh, 3-4 flying. Yeah, generating three cards in a turn is sad. I think I do want to trade off with the human, just try to keep Adeline under control. That sucks so bad, oh no. All right, gonna need something big. And I weirdly don't know if Minsk and Boo is enough. It's not that stupid shit. Okay, Minsk and Boo makes the token. I can make the token 4-4, four, four, which is not big enough to beat anything starting next turn. They have, they can make Kithkin at least 4-4. Four, four. I can't kill the Kithkin here. Uh, I feel like I'm behind, and I don't know what my rips are at this point. And we know Flicker Wisp is in their deck. If I attack, I'm dead. I think I need Minsk and Boo to survive somehow, and then playing draw a million, string something together. Really wish this Mox Diamond was Fatal Push right now. If they can cast two creatures or just like one Solitude, I'm in a lot of trouble. Four mana spent. I have forced blocks everywhere if they just level the Kithkin. Fire Covenant's already in the graveyard. No way to get it back. Valborn Tyrant gone. Yeah, this game is frustrating because the turn I plus Chandra, if I had Blood Tokened, I would have ended up with Sneak Attack, Valborn Tyrant. Yeah, gain two life off of that. They've probably done the math. Oh, yep. Just fucking dead. Uh, yeah. Guide of Souls made it happen. I don't think I could afford to ignore that 4-5. And they're going to be able to pump again. Yeah, good game. Dead in the finals. Just came down to the decision to Chandra it or Blood first. Which I think I made the right decision. Because Chandra is less of an investment. It just RNG'd out that way. But opponent's deck is really good. They have Black Lotus and Mana Crypt. Not that they were involved in this game. But they were involved in the game. They won otherwise. Ugh. All right. Well, we got three matches out of the video. This was the deck. I am mostly happy with this deck. I am interested in if Cube Experts would have gone for the monster package. Like Sneak Attack, Vulpor Tyrant, Archon of Cruelty obviously can go over the top in a lot of spots. The Vulpor Tyrant did win me a game that I otherwise was kind of behind in. Gave me live draws in a bunch of spots where I was way behind. However, they also sat in my hand or just bricked off a Chandra flip in spots where. I could have used a spell. I don't think I looked at the art on Archon of Cruelty once in the entire league. It was never in my graveyard. It was never in my hand. I think I animate deaded once, and it was an opponent's card that randomly died once. This three drop slot, weirdly empty. And it was pretty clear from the draft that red was wide open, and red is full of broadside bombardiers, Lelia, Goblin Rabble Master, Gut, etc., etc. This was the draft where I opened in T pack one pick one, so maybe someone was touching my red a little bit, but this Chandra was on the wheel, this fire confluence was kind of late. Weird signals and weird to end up with basically no threes. This was fun. It was uh, inspiring. I have another 64 person draft. I qualified for two of them this week. I will record that one tomorrow. And everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I will see you next time.